There are new signs that life could have once existed on Mars. Today, NASA scientists announced that the Mars Curiosity rover has found organic matter in three billion year old mudstone on the red planet. It all began with a curious anomaly in the Martian soil, one that at first didn't seem to carry the weight of history. NASA's Perseverance rover, tirelessly traversing the Jezero crater, had been gathering samples and data for over a year. Equipped with some of the most advanced scientific instruments ever sent to another planet, it had already sent back impressive geological data and evidence of ancient river deltas. But what it recently uncovered sent waves through the entire scientific community and beyond. Beneath the reddish dust of Mars, where wind once carved canyons in long dried lake beds, the rover made a discovery so profoundly unsettling, so paradigm shifting, that it could alter humanity's very understanding of its place in the universe. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. While conducting its routine spectroscopic analysis of sediment layers in an ancient clay-rich deposit, the rover's scanning system picked up a strange chemical signature, unlike any previously recorded on Mars. The initial reading suggested the presence of a complex carbon structure, but further investigation revealed something far more compelling. Organized microstructures embedded in mineral matrices, bearing an unmistakable resemblance to microbial colonies. Not mere organic molecules which had been found before, but intricate patterns and formations that implied biological activity, perhaps fossilized, perhaps dormant, but almost certainly of once living origin. The implications were staggering. Mars, long believed to be a dead world, had just offered up its most guarded secret. It may have once harbored life. The microstructures were not haphazard mineral alignments or ambiguous blobs of carbon compounds. These formations exhibited symmetry, uniformity, and distribution patterns highly suggestive of biological processes. Even more compelling, they were discovered in a stratified context, nestled between layers that could be accurately dated to more than 3.7 billion years ago a period when Mars was known to have water, a thicker atmosphere, and a temperate climate. This was no coincidence. The fossilized remains, or at least what was suspected to be, came from a time when Mars was at its most Earth-like. What made the discovery even more electrifying was the composition of the microstructures. Using advanced X-ray diffraction and Raman spectroscopy, the rover's onboard instruments analyzed the internal molecular bonds of the samples. The findings were beyond anything the mission scientists had hoped for. There were distinct signs of amino acid chains, rudimentary proteins preserved in a matrix of magnetite and sulfide, materials often associated with biological processes on Earth. Not only were the structures possibly biological, but they might also represent an entirely unique branch of life, independent from Earth's biosphere. The idea of a second genesis had been theorized for decades. Life that began on Mars, formed through entirely separate biochemical pathways. If confirmed, this would mean that life is not a rare fluke but a cosmic imperative, emerging wherever conditions are favorable. The Martian discovery didn't just challenge the idea that Earth was special, it undermined it entirely. And with that realization came a cascade of new questions, each more profound than the last. Could life exist elsewhere in the solar system? What might it look like in the oceans beneath Europa or Enceladus? And perhaps more urgently, if life once existed on Mars, what happened to it? Though no aftermath was yet documented or discussed, the immediate implications of the find were seismic. The microstructures were not in a region associated with active geology, meaning they hadn't been brought there by some fluke or contamination. Instead, they lay exactly where ancient microbial colonies might have flourished, near what was once a shallow, sunlit lake bed rich in minerals and energy sources. The conditions were perfect. Stable temperatures, liquid water, and chemical gradients that on Earth would teem with life. The context reinforced the evidence. The site wasn't just a lucky break, it was a biological hotspot frozen in time. A discovery of this magnitude also forced a reassessment of planetary protection protocols. If Mars once supported life, even microbial, the idea of sending humans to its surface became far more complicated. There were ethical considerations to weigh, about contamination, about preservation, and about our responsibility as explorers. Could human presence endanger any remaining traces of life? Would it compromise future studies, 
forever muddying the search for native biology? Suddenly, the planet that had long captivated humanity's imagination was no longer just a rock to explore. It was a former cradle of life, perhaps a cousin world deserving of respect and caution. There was also a practical side to the discovery. The biochemistry hinted at in the samples showed potential markers for extremophiles, organisms that thrive in harsh conditions. This bolstered hopes that some form of life, however dormant or hidden, might still exist on Mars today, perhaps deep underground where geothermal heat could provide energy. The presence of fossilized or preserved biological material meant that the processes leading to life were not isolated events, but the results of replicable planetary chemistry. Mars didn't just mimic the conditions necessary for life, it fulfilled them. Within the carefully layered sediments, isotopic ratios revealed another intriguing detail. The carbon detected in the samples had a preferential weighting toward lighter isotopes, something that, on Earth, is typically associated with biological activity. It was another strong clue, further strengthening the argument that the structures were not geological anomalies but products of life. Moreover, some of the minerals encasing these microstructures exhibited textural features consistent with biofilm formation, slimy layers formed by communities of microorganisms. On Earth, these biofilms are among the oldest preserved traces of life, found in rocks dating back billions of years. Mars had just added its name to that ancient record. The rover's cameras, capable of capturing microscopic detail with astonishing clarity, provided visual confirmation of these filigree networks. Long, filamentous shapes intertwined with spherical clusters, forming colonies that looked eerily familiar. It was as if time had frozen the last breath of Martian life, preserving it in a clay tomb untouched for eons. The site was beautiful, haunting, and transformational all at once. No artist's impression or simulation could prepare humanity for the real images. The silent, stunning proof that something had once lived in the rust-red soil of another world. The discovery didn't end with one sample. Over the following weeks, as the rover moved with cautious precision across the crater floor, more of these formations were found. Some were larger, more complex, perhaps indicating diverse microbial ecosystems. Others were fragmentary, possibly remnants of colonies long disrupted by erosion or volcanic upheaval. But they were there, widespread and consistent, scattered across regions known to have held water for millions of years. The evidence was not just a one-off miracle, it was repeated, systematic, and undeniable. At the same time, atmospheric sensors picked up faint traces of gases that shouldn't be present in such a barren environment. Traces of methane and hydrogen sulfide in localized pockets, the kind often associated with subsurface microbial activity. Though the levels were minute, their correlation with the sites of the microstructures was difficult to ignore. Something in the ground still appeared to be active, or at the very least, still slowly releasing the remnants of its long-vanished past. Suddenly, entire fields of science faced a renaissance. Astrobiology, exoplanetary studies, synthetic biology, and evolutionary theory all stood to be rewritten or expanded. The discovery sparked new theoretical frameworks about how life emerges and adapts. Could similar forms be evolving right now under the icy crusts of distant moons? If life arose independently on Mars, how common might it be in the galaxy? These were no longer speculative musings. They were now research directives backed by tangible evidence. Moreover, the Mars findings fed into a long-debated possibility, panspermia. The idea that life could travel between worlds, seeding planets through meteoritic exchange. Could life have begun on Mars and traveled to Earth on a meteorite billions of years ago? Or vice versa? The implications blurred the line between the origins of earthly and Martian life, perhaps tying them together in a cosmic genealogy that spanned planets. The genetic roots of humanity might not begin solely on Earth, but in the dust of Mars, under a sky where twin moons still rise in silence. The sense of wonder that accompanied this discovery transcended science. It touched on philosophy, religion, and the core of human identity. To know that we are not, and never have been the sole life-bearing rock in the solar system changes not just the nature of exploration, but the nature of existence itself. The Martian fossils, or what most now believe to be fossils, stood as quiet testimony to a second cradle of life, a world that had once breathed, and perhaps dreamed, only to fall silent. NASA's mission objectives suddenly gained a weightier significance. 
The samples collected by the rover intended to be returned to Earth in a future mission were no longer just geological curiosities, they were relics of life. Their transport, handling, and analysis would be treated with a reverence typically reserved for ancient scrolls or sacred artifacts. Scientists around the globe prepared for what would be the most anticipated lab studies in human history, poised to peer billions of years into another planet's biological story. And the silence of Mars, once thought to be a final silence. And in doing so, it made Mars feel less like a distant, lifeless orb, and more like a mirror held up across millions of miles, reflecting back the shared heritage of a universe alive with possibility. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on NASA's terrifying new Mars rover discovery? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.